I'd like to talk briefly about correlations. We mentioned them in class, and when we talk about correlations, we're talking about relationships between two variables, often represented with a scatter plot. Write that up here. Scatter plots are excellent for uh, determining trends, finding correlations, and seeing if two things are related to one another, and if so, how they interact. We have three different types of correlations. Well, two different types, and then one that's kind of a non-example. You have positive correlations, you have negative correlations, and then you have times when there's simply no correlation whatsoever. Now, I have three different examples in here, some of which I've used in class. Uh, study time versus GPA seems like a good one to start with. I'll use an example here. If study time is in an increasing value from zero up to essentially infinity, I might have a student that studies very little and likewise might have a very low GPA. Or I might have some other students in that same range that study very little and have a relatively low GPA. If I have a student that studies a lot more, it would make sense that their GPA would most likely go up. So maybe I'm going to have some students up here in this high range that are going to be big studiers and students that get good grades. And of course in the middle it would make sense that the data might suggest that those things link together. This right here looks to me like a positive slope, if we're using that phrasing. This is also a positive correlation. I might even consider this a strong positive correlation because the points are so close to what we might call a line of best fit. If I were to try to represent this data with a straight line, I would draw a line not connecting each of the dots, but simply through them to represent that trend. What that might allow me to do then is make a prediction. For example, maybe I have a student that studies for 10 hours, if I were to have some numbers on here, and I wanted to predict their GPA, though it would vary from student to student, I could make a fair guess by going up to the, my line of best fit, going over to GPA, and if I had had some numbers on here, I might be able to predict whatever that student's GPA number would be. That's how GPAs, study times, and correlations interact. Let's look at a negative correlation. Practice time versus golf score. Now you might think negative sounds bad, but golfers all around want their score to go down. That's the sign of a good golfer. If I have, again, someone who studies, I'm sorry, practices very little, over towards zero hours per week, let's say, their golf score would most likely be quite high, a lot like mine would be. I don't practice, I don't really know how to play all that well, so therefore it takes me a lot more strokes to get um, the golf ball into the cup. If my practice time increases, I begin to practice a little bit more, it would make sense that my score starts to come down a little bit. If I really devote myself to the sport and I practice a lot, my golf score might end up very close to my um, best score. I wouldn't suggest it's going to approach zero, but it is definitely going to decrease. And I'm putting some more dots on there to represent other people that might have a decreasing score as well. Again, I can draw a line of best fit. And then I could make some predictions based on, well, whatever I want my score to be, I could use a certain number. If that's what I wanted to score, I might be able to go over, come down, and say, well, this number of hours is how many hours I need to practice to make that score happen. I should also mention that if I had a point out here, for example, or maybe a point out here, for example, those points, because they're outside of the norm, are called outliers. They are very, very different than the rest. They don't fit the trend, and we typically don't include them. Even though there are real people out there that maybe practice a little bit, but still have a low score, that's a, that's a good golfer. That might be a natural golfer right there. Or someone who practices a lot but simply cannot bring their score down. This is a person who's going to just keep throwing their money away on the course. These two people are not like the rest, so therefore we don't typically use them for our line of best fit. Finally, let's look at the no correlation example. A no correlation might be if I compared my students' heights to their IQs. I think you would agree that their height, if I have somebody that's really short, they could have a high, medium, or low IQ. Or somebody that's really tall might have a high, medium, or low IQ. And of course, people in the middle might have high, medium, or low IQs. And for that matter, I could have different points and different students at all different heights and IQs. There's no real way to draw a trend line. I wouldn't have any idea where it would go. So I'm not able to draw a trend line. So there's simply no correlation. I cannot make a prediction based on height and IQ. So we reviewed the three basic kinds of correlations. 
which are usually associated with scatter plots. You've got your positive and your trend line. You've got your negative correlation with your trend line and your outliers. And you have your no correlation, which as you can see really cannot have a trend line because there's no trend to be observed.